Depression often manifests itself as a sort of state of strickenness in which one is paralyzed in many different ways. You're paralyzed morally, you're paralyzed psychologically, you're paralyzed emotionally. Um, all these things can combine to result in you even being paralyzed physically. I've, I've never heard of anyone being actually incapable of moving, but uh, people do end up uh, talking much slower. You walk slower. Um, uh, you just you seem to be just dragging yourself around everywhere. Uh, and one of the things that I think caused this in some people, it certainly caused it in me, I believe, was a sort of half-hearted determinism. Um, I psychologically believed in determinism, but I hadn't actually worked it out in my mind. And I don't even think at the age that I was at, I would have called it determinism. I just sort of believed as many people do uh, when you ask uh, the question, the fundamental question, is there free will or not, that no, the world was simply too big, the universe was too big to make my will to actually mean anything. Um, so it, it, it either didn't exist, my free will, or it existed in such an infinitesimal way compared to the general will of the universe that it may as well not exist. Okay, fair enough. That solves an awful lot of problems. Um, but the other side of the coin is, though, I didn't believe that that let me off the hook morally or um, psychologically or ethically. I still had to be a moral agent. I was still deeply responsible for everything that I did. Um, obviously, we know where that comes from. That's uh, a recipe for uh, your stereotypical Catholic guilt. Uh, you're living in a completely deterministic universe, and, and in spite of the fact that the Roman Catholic Church preaches free will, I do believe that they actually are the hardest of hard determinists. Um, isn't that an interesting thing, eh? Um, and you end up in this bizarre sort of um, hellish dilemma between the absolute imperative of acting as a moral agent in this world and your complete incapacity to do so. Something's got to give? Not necessarily. <clears throat> um, in the Iliad, book one of the Iliad uh, deals with the rage of Achilles. The rage of Achilles is one of the main themes of the Iliad, Homer's uh, story of the Trojan War. The ancient Greeks dealt with the whole idea of determinism. They were determinists of the highest order. They didn't believe that free will was possible, let alone uh, likely to be uh, manifest in the physical universe. They would have thought the whole idea is absurd because they, their philosophy believed in gods. They didn't really understand the universe around them. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, they, not only didn't they understand the universe around them, but they understood that they didn't understand it. They understood that this universe we were in didn't make sense. Hence their um, essentially tragic view of life. Uh, or uh, even their idea that life is in some sense hellish. The, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, all of Homer, seems to indicate that the world is actually a hellish place. It's not a good place at all because again we live in this world where things happen and the individual is overwhelmed at all times. Um, but still, we have things like honor, decency, um, compassion that seem to drive us. We know that the universe is completely deterministic. We understand this. But something in us tells us that it isn't. And this is, of course, what causes Achilles' rage. He understands that he's a prisoner of all these events, but he's also arrogant, and his arrogance makes him think that he's not a prisoner of causality. And so his rebellion against the fact that uh, he actually is a prisoner of causality causes rage. That makes me wonder about the nature of belief, and in this particular case, the nature of deterministic belief. Why would a determinist 
be angry. If the world is only the way that it could possibly be, if, if the world is exactly what it, the only world that could possibly be, why rage against it? There's something fundamentally lunatic about that, or, or I should think again, Homeric, tragic about that. Um, you believe that the world is exactly the only way that it could possibly be, and yet you, something in you tells you that it's gone wrong and it ought not to be this way. That is the logjam that uh, resulted, I think, in my depression, and it was a bad one. Um, and it uh, it's a hard one to get over. And again, I uh, the way that I talk and my friend up there that gets me into so much trouble makes me uh, uh, makes me sound like I'm some sort of a theist, and I don't care if anyone actually takes me uh, uh, as such. But I tend to go to um, back to the despondency of Arjuna in the uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, um, and, and again throw that metaphor or that particular illustration down the sink if you don't like it. Just take the ideas that come from it, which is essentially what I do. Yes, we're in a logjam. We're in an impossible situation here. Events have spun so badly out of control that what you most feared is now right in your face. And every single step of the way, you have attempted to do what is morally right. What on earth do I do? Do I seize up? Do I curl up in a fetal ball and say, this is simply too much for me? Um, because, again, there's nothing like a, a dose of hard, cold reality to make a determinist out of someone, uh, to make, make us understand just how small we are in the, in the scale of things. Okay, um, then I will just sort of seize up, I'll become a paralytic atom and just let the world go its own way because it simply is too much for me. That's depression because what happens is you try to do this, you try to seize up, and there's always something worse that can happen to you. There's always something else that pulls you back into the world, whether or not you want to seize up. So you end up in a seized up state, but still acting in the world. So I don't really know if determinism is a sort of position that one can rationally apply, given the fact that we are human beings who don't work in a logical, cold, analytical way. We are the ancient Greeks. We believe that our fate is completely in the hands of the gods. Our feelings are completely in the hands of the gods. Everything that we ever do, we are simply toys of the gods. Um, we don't mean anything. We are nothing. And yet, we still cannot escape responsibility for our actions. That's the, one of the biggest snares of existence, if you ask me. Um, it's one of the biggest log jams you can possibly run into. I'm not debunking determinism here. Rather, I'm saying, um, or I'm not even attempting to debunk determinism here. In, in a certain way, I, I'm, I'm a determinist myself. But what I will say is that determinism is an incomplete illustration or an incomplete view of the fundamental nature of the universe and the fundamental nature of our place in it and our ultimate nature. If we're just machines, why does it feel like we're more than just machines? Thank you.